All right, ready? ready. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Everyday Carry Cast. My name is Samuel. Dwayne Freeman here. And today we're going to be checking out 12 or more of the mini blade shapes for EDC. Wait, blades? I thought we were talking about guns. <laughs> <laughs> So Freeman's going to kick us off with the first blade shape. All right. Well, first one on my list is called a trailing point. This is the CGRB Gobi. And when you say trailing point, I want you to think of the back of the blade uh, handles here. And the tip of the blade will go higher than the handle. The, the blade trails upwards. It's also referred to as a... Um, up swept blade or even a Persian style blade and then we have the C CRKT ritual so you can see how those blades sweep upward so what is the trailing point used for well I can tell you from experience what they're used for um, this is one of my father's uh, I've done taxidermy with my father for over 10 years and this is a Victorinox and we had about five of these, and I have fleshed hundreds of deer and even bear with this knife and, and knives like it. So if you know anything about skinning, once you harvest the deer, you skin the hide off of the body, you turn it inside out, and then you have to do what you call flesh it. So you put it on a fleshing board, and you just flesh all the red meat off of it, fat, anything else, and then you're able to salt it. So these blades are made, designed for skinning and filleting. Can it be used as an EDC? I'd say so. Absolutely. This one. That one? <laughs> not, not as much. Not so much. This is something you want to show people at the party. But this one works great for an EDC. Can I cut open boxes with that? Absolutely. You know, it's, uh, this is about a $55 knife. It's got G10 handles. Look, check out the jade. It's got the orange backspacer there. And um, very nice. I like this CJRB. So something that we're going to see a lot with, I think, pretty much every blade shape on here is that it started out not being a pocket knife blade shape. And, you know, it started out as a uh, what would you say? A, a tool. A specific tool. A specific blade shape for a specific task. task. So That's right. You'll see that a lot in these lists. So the first one is the trailing point. The trailing point. I like it. That thing is absolutely ridiculous, that CRKT. I love it. All right. Well, up next, we're going to jump right into some of the better known ones. We're going to go with a reverse tanto, or also known as a spade blade. Now, why is it called a spade blade? Okay, this might be just me, but I kind of thought it was like a shovel because, you know, you, it, it, like on your older pocket knives, it kind of looks like a shovel blade or, I mean, a shovel tip. What would you call it? But anyway, actually, it's called a spade blade because it is used by farmers or was back in the day to spade and neuter their animals. So the reason that it is shaped the way it is is for that really, really fine, finite work that you can get in there and control that tip of the knife very, very easily. Another great thing about a reverse tanto, this is the Benchmade 940, which is probably the best known knife with a reverse tanto, is the stabbing capabilities. The tip is so strong that it's kind of like the same thing about a tanto, that it has such a strong tip on it for stabbing. Reverse tanto is the same way, except you get all the versatilities of a drop point. You get that belly, you don't have the straight edge with the sudden angle like a tanto you have the usability of the belly of the knife and you have that strong tip for stabbing i know a lot of people even though you shouldn't use their 940 as prying you know to pry and to undo screw heads with and stuff like that so this I knife have a has story a, about that so don't do that yeah don't do that but this uh this knife is, has a very strong tip you sh was originally used for spaying animals so the reverse tanto or the spay blade was our second is that the only knife you have? That is the only knife I have. Would it be a common blade shape, you think? It is more common on older 
um, slip joints. So, you know, a lot of your yeah. cases and your rough riders, and rough riders, I know, but, but whatever, but like they'll have the original, like regular drop point and like uh, maybe more of a Warren Cliff blade, and then they'll have this spade blade. And okay. so it, it's seen quite a bit on older knives and some on newer knives. And I think that goes with number three as well. Number three is the Hawkbill. This is my grandfather's. Uh, this knife is at least 70 plus years old. When my grandfather passed away, my father got all the knives. And now my dad knows that I love knives, collect knives. So he went, and get, went ahead and gave me all of my grandfather's knives. And I remember as a boy seeing my grandpa pull this knife out of his pocket and he would, you know, peel apples with it, peel pears. He, he was using it to have everyday carry, you know. It is a slip joint. It's an old case knife, again, 70-plus years old. Originally, these were used for agricultural purposes. Uh, pruning, pruning different, you know, vines, grapes, things, I don't know. <laughs> Small plants. Right. Um, as far as an EDC goes... You, there's not a lot to choose from as far as hawkbills are concerned. You don't see a lot of them, but they do look cool. Uh, this is a honey badger, and I th guess you would call that a hawkbill. And um, one thing that I remember about a hawkbill blade, this is very vivid. The first job I ever had was at a nursery hmm. when I was like 14 years old. Taking care of babies? Not the baby nurseries. <laughs> Tom's Creek Nursery, which is plants and, you know, trees and shrubs. I got the job at 14 years old, and guess what they do? They give me a hawkbill blade and say, this is, your, this is your tool that you need to use. And they would show me how to cut the weeds out of the pots. Hmm. No, don't cut the bush, don't cut the tree, but how to cut the weed, and we used a hawkbill knife. That's cool. So it was cool. So, you know, I've actually had a little bit of experience with these knives. So the question is, does it make a good EDC? Absolutely. Check out that tip. You could easily open some boxes with this. You can reverse grip, have you some <laughs> action. So very good EDC. I would recommend the hawkbill. And awesome. good conversation piece. Yeah. I did not mention that about the last knife. Is it a good EDC? And absolutely it is. Um, actually, another use for a hawkbill knife is the carpenters, like people who do carpet. Um, people uh -huh. who do stuff like that is a carpet knife, so it gets up under the – it's great for pull cuts, so it gets up under the carpet and cuts it as you go. I think that knife originated from what they used to call a hook axe. Mm -hmm. And this is the Gerber bill hook. <laughs> oh, that's cool. So – you can see his uh, bigger brother. But these were used, designed for like trimming hedges. So anything, and we just call it uh, the Gerber bushwhacker is what I call bushwhacker. it. <laughs> well, that's, that's pretty sweet. All right, up next, we're going to go into the clip point. And under the clip point, we are also going to go buoy. So you asked this question last night. Yes. What is the difference between a bowie knife and a clip point. Clip point. Well, from what I've seen, now, we're not experts on this stuff. We've done some research, and we're trying to just convey a little bit of uses for these blade shapes. Go out and do your own research. If we say something wrong, we're sorry. But what's the difference between a clip point and a bowie? Well, I can't tell you. Um, a clip point is, or a bowie is kind of a variation of a clip point, I believe. So the reason it's called a bowie knife is the, there was a, uh, now I can't remember his name. What was his name? I can't remember his name. I'm thinking David Bowie. <laughs> That's not it. I'm pretty sure he was a singer. Uh, Bowie knife was created for James Bowie, who was a fighter in the Alamo, legendary, came, uh, you know, fought in the Alamo in Texas, 
and I believe his brother made it for him. And so that's where it got its big, that's where the Bowie knife really became famous. And so what's the difference between a clip point and a Bowie knife? I think it's really just the name. One thing I have noticed is on a Bowie knife, <clears throat> excuse me, it's great for piercing. And so it seems to me like there's usually a little bit more material out towards the end to strengthen it, not make it such a brittle tip. But really, the difference between them, I think, mainly is the name. I mean, you know, you've got a Bowie knife that has that, you know, kind of clipped out end with the blunt or with the very sharp tip. And with the clip point, kind of same thing. The reason they call it a clip point is it looks like somebody just took like scissors or nail clippers and just went clip it off. and clipped out the material right there. So this is great as a skinner. This is great for, uh, you know, any kind of skinning test like you were talking about with that Persian blade. Wouldn't you say that's probably the most popular blade shape in the world? Or no, what? I wouldn't. You wouldn't? Maybe second most popular. Okay. But it, it is one of the most popular. And does this work for an everyday carry? Absolutely. Absolutely. I've been carrying this knife quite a few days. Uh, this is the Benchmade tagged out. And I carried it for work. And I love the length of it. I love the belly on it. And that's the great thing about this knife for skinning is the belly. Right out here at the end. I actually used my Ontario Rat 1 to skin a deer one time and it did a really good job it's not a clip point but it does have a very similar belly i think it's actually a straight edge but really really like the belly on this review coming to this soon but i'm not going to do a review until i can skin a deer with it and tell you how it did so there you go that's your bowie and your clip point both of them work great for everyday carry i've everyday carried this one and this one really like them yeah i haven't counted but i would venture to say that at least 50 percent of my knives that i own would be Clip points really? or drop points. Absolutely. All right, next for me is the famous Tonto. And we're not talking about the Indian. <laughs> oh, we can't say that. Tonto was an Indian. Native man. American. No, he was an Indian. And it was uh, the Lone Ranger's second hand man. All right, Tonto, not Tanto. But if you say Tanto, it's okay. You're just a Yankee. So where did Tonto <laughs> come from? Well, originally, Japan. When you say Tanto, you should think of a sword. The katana. This is not no cheap, um, what's them things called? Flea market knives. This is a real sword that I paid a lot of money with for, and it's got a very sharp edge. And if you look at the tip of the blade, what do you think this design that's considered a tanto, 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 what do you think it was designed for? Piercing. Piercing, thrusting, that's it. I mean, you, you even find some where they say it was designed to go through armor and things like that, chain mail, or they even had paper type of, you know, armor. Mm -hmm. So, derived in uh, Japan. Now, and that would be considered more of your, like, Japanese style tanto instead of old your western. Old school, right. exactly. Old school traditional tanto looked like that. Now we have modernized it and it's called western tanto or even uh, Americanized tanto. So I have several here. I have um, a cold steel con. Check out that tanto blade. Super cool. I like this knife. It does not have a thumb stud. It has like a thumb disc. Pretty cool. And then, of course, the first auto I've ever bought was the Boker Kalashnikov 74. Bam! And there's the Tonto. Yeah, I like Tonto. Here is the uh, new Civivi Thug. Thug 2? Yeah, I think it's Thug 2. So that must be the second one. And you can see how like small the tip on the Boker is compared to or the belly of the front, right? I don't know what you call it that, there. That one's almost more of a Japanese-style Tonto, the yep. thug. And what do we got here? It's, so this is one of the knives for the giveaway, and I have no idea what the name of it is. It's the Hogue <laughs> <Open> something. It. <laughs> the Hogue something. Um, Sean over at SCB, who supplied some of the knives for this video, so that's our chance to plug him. Yes. Big thanks to Sean and the guys over at SCB Guns and Ammo in Thomasville, North Carolina. Go check them out if you're ever in town. But... He gave me this one for the giveaway that's coming up for 500 subscribers. Nice. And that is, you want to talk about piercing? 
check that Tonto out. That thing is awesome. I'm sure we'll throw some B-roll in here so you can see it, but yes, we it's pretty will. sweet. And one thing the most I like about the Tonto, can it be used as an EDC? Absolutely. I've carried one many times. Here's why I like it. Obviously, you got a very pointy tip right here, but then you also have another type of tip right there. I'm shaking like crazy. So if you want to open up some boxes, you can do it that way. And I've broken the tip off of a Tonto before, uh -huh. and you're still able to use that secondary tip. So, you know, opening boxes, open up packages, everyday carry, absolutely. Yeah, these, personally, I don't like to carry a Tonto for, for my EDC. EDC. Just because, I don't know what it is about it. It might be like just my everyday use case. I, I don't love it, but I could definitely see for scraping or uh, a lot of people say they like to dull the edge down mm. and let or let it become dull just for scraping tasks. And uh, another great thing about it is you have two edges. You dull one of the edges, you've still got a complete other edge yeah. to use. So. Yeah, and another thing, I think it just looks scarier. It does. You know, you pull out a, a drop point, you know, and you're not going to think much about it, but somebody pulls out, you know, a Tonto blade, you're going to immediately get this, whoa, what are you doing, you know. So maybe that's why. Maybe it looks scary. All right. Oh, Moving I forgot on. one. Hold on. Oh, did you, did you? I, 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 this is my SOG. Uh, SOG uh, oh, Sogfari is what it's called. Sogfari, huh? No, that's not a Tanto. That's a Tonto it's a right there. <laughs> so check that out. Rolls off the, that doesn't roll off the tongue as well. SOG Fari. That's right. Sogfari. Sogfari. <laughs> All right. So moving on, we're going to move on to one of the absolute most famous blade shapes there is Sheep's Foot. Now, really? As, <laughs> as the name would imply. Uh, some people might think it's named after, named after the fact that it kind of has the shape of a hoof or a sheep's foot, but it doesn't. It was actually called sheep's foot because it was used for actually trimming the feet of a of a sheep. Of a sheep. <laughs> yeah. So it's made for trimming the hooves. And hooves. It, that's the word. Yeah. I was looking go. for. And um, actually, modernized sheep's foot have more of a tip on them. Uh, and that does work a lot better for everyday carry. But the old sheep's foot blades wouldn't have that much of a sharp tip on them. They had more of a rounded tip. And so, yeah, it's got that curve off. It's got that relatively flat um, sharpened edge. And it's got that roll off. Now, this looks very similar to another knife that I'm sure we'll talk about soon, maybe next. And uh, But this is not that. This is a sheep's foot. We'll talk about the difference in a minute. But, yeah, the sheep's foot is a great, great blade for everyday carry absolutely um, it was like we said originally used for trimming the hooves of sheep but it translated into an amazing everyday carry if you're doing tasks where <clears throat> you have to cut on a flat surface these are perfect if you have to make long cuts these work pretty great too you angle the knife back at a 45 and you can slide it all the way down the material you're cutting also it works great for getting up under things and cutting so the everyday the uh sheep's foot blade is great for everyday carry very versatile yeah, and it's, it does have a very sharp tip, but it's harder to get to the tip. Like the Tanto is just boom, out yep, there. right there. Yeah. Where that one is, you would have to, you know, so for like stabbing and things like that, right. you probably wouldn't want to use it. But, of course, for everyday carry, very good. And that leads us into our next one. Actually, I'm going to skip. Oh, okay, okay, it's coming okay. after okay. this. All right, next is spear point or dagger or leaf. Like, to me... I could not find um, any information on why they're different. Mm -hmm. They're right. all so similar. So basically what I come up with, if it's a leaf-shaped blade, it should look like a leaf. <laughs> As my condor leaf, right? All right, so that's the condor leaf. And well, it, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to ask, like, what what would be the original use for a leaf shaped blade? Okay, I'll I'll come back to that. Okay, okay. So as far as my spear point goes, the only knife in my collection that I have is a CRKT squid. They do call that a, a spear point. Mm -hmm. So, and what makes it a spear point? Well, in the very from the tip. Through the middle, it will be symmetrical and even on each side. Now, this one is not sharp at the top. So some of them have what you call a false edge. It looks like it's sharp, but it's not. 
So that's spear point. Now, what makes the difference between a spear point and a dagger? Well, a dagger is sharp on both sides. Ah, okay. Okay, so most spear points, which makes no sense because I have a spear here. <laughs> Just happen to have one. Obviously, my M48 United Cutlery um, spear is sharp on both sides. So they don't call this a dagger. They call it a spear. So it's confusing. <laughs> dagger, spear. So the way I take it, spear point, normally with an EDC knife, it's only sharp on one side. If it's sharp on both sides, obviously, double penetration with cutting there, then that would be considered a dagger. And then we got this today, picked this up at SCB. They let us borrow it. I really want it for my own collection. What is this? Ooh, that's a good question. That's a good question. It's the Microtech Stormtrooper. There it is. Looks like a Stormtrooper. That's a Sand Trooper. Sand it's Trooper. Sand <laughs> yeah, there you go. But it looks like something a Stormtrooper would carry. Right. right. Yeah, super cool. And it's sharp on both sides, so this is considered a... Spear point. Spear point or dagger. There you go. So, confusing. If you can find uh, some information on that that can tell me the difference between a spear point and a dagger and a leaf shape, please let me know. But basically, here's what I come to the conclusion of. Whatever the box says when you buy it, that's what you call it. <laughs> there you go. Then you, can, <clears throat> then you can blame it on somebody else. <laughs> that's a leaf shape, what the box says. <laughs> that's right. All right. Up next, we're going to talk about a kind of a, uh, a, what would you say, different blade shape. And this one is actually not the same as the original blade was. So, the original harpoon is what this one is. The original was for well, harpooning things, whether it be on a spear to stick in. That way, you the, the, uh, the person you were attacking couldn't just pull it right out it would be stuck and it would take stuff with it when it went out mm -hmm. or like for what it's most most famous for would be like whale hunting where you harpoon a fish or a whale and it sticks in there and it can't get away but nowadays we use harpoon blades number one because they look awesome look cool <laughs> number two that harpoon right there it's going to be used for putting your finger on the back of it and giving pressure to the tip of the blade for those finite cuts so in all in every other way, it's a drop point, except that little harpoon spot where you can choke your finger up like that. So, that's what this is for. Uh, really, really cool blade shape. Number one, it looks awesome. I love, one of the main reasons I like this knife, of course, it's a great knife, but it looks awesome. So, harpoon's a little weird, but here's the question. Can it be used for everyday carry? Absolutely. Absolutely. Does everything a clip point would do? And just looks cooler. Right, it does. It's the exact same as a drop point, except for that. And what, what I meant to say about the dagger, say I'm so used to putting my finger on the on the spine sometimes right. with blade. I, I've gotten that habit, and that's why I don't particularly like a dagger because I might actually put my finger there. So it does make more sense to go back to something like the spear point, where if you want to do some fine work, you're not getting cut. Right. Didn't mean to take up more of your time. Oh, no, time. you're fine. You're fine. And we didn't ask if that one works for everyday carry, but absolutely. Again, uh, yeah, it would, but for this one, it would be mainly for me a um, money clip, front pocket knife, back up for a knife. All right. What's up next? Next is the worn clip. There we go. That's what I was getting at with the sheep's foot. Okay. So I have a few worn cliffs here to show you. So got to go to the Atlanta Blade Show this year. And I uh, picked up a Kaiser Swags design. It's called the Swayback. And everybody was saying, Swags is here, Swags is here. And I'm like, who's Swags? <laughs> Found out that she is the um, one that came up with this blade shape, uh, designed it. So I put all my knives out. I have several hundred. And I, I asked my wife, I said, honey, look at all of these knives. Which one do you like? And I'm not kidding you. Out of like 150 knives, she said, I like this one. You know, it was designed yep. by a female. I thought that was so cool. So this is a Warren Cliff. Now, why are they called a Warren Cliff? Basically, from 
the back of the spine all the way to the tip, it constantly drops down to a very acute tip. So here's another example. This is the Kaiser splinter. So you can just see how sharp it is all the way to the tip. And then we got the new Spyderco. Yo Jimbo. Yo Jimbo. Got this from SCB today so we could show this one as well. Now this one would probably be called modified Warren Cliff, but still you can see from the basically from the handle down it drops to this very acute tip. Yeah, and a really <clears throat> really kind of like I said on the sheep's foot, what really makes this a Warren Cliff part of part of what would make it a Warren Cliff is that completely flat edge. So I'm gonna use my finger, don't try this at home. But as you can see, that edge is pretty much completely flat. Completely straight across. All three of them are. So that kind of shows you something else that kind of verifies it as a Warren Cliff blade. Now, the history behind this blade a little bit is... Go ahead. Uh, for me, I found that a lot of people used it for um, carving, wood carving. And, you know, you can use this for, like, drilling holes into wood. So it was basically a whittler's knife, you know. Somebody just put it in the front pocket and whittled with it. Right. Now he's going to give you even more details on it. So I heard this. This wasn't supposed to be my blade shape, but I heard this while I was, uh, you know, doing a little bit of research on it that the Earl of Warren, uh, Earl of Warren Cliff, uh, was. I'm sorry, the Earl of something in England. His name was Warren Cliff, or he would lived in Warren Cliff. I don't remember, but <laughs> something about Warren Cliff. And he was sitting around the table with some uh, buddies, and they got to talking about pocket knives, or spring knives as they called them, which were slip joints. And he, they were talking about how there had not been any innovation lately in the whole knife market. And so he was a, what would you call it, a funder of one of the knife brands in England. And so he... Went to them. They designed the Warren Cliff off of the Sheep's Foot platform. So the Sheep's Foot had been around for a long time, and they wanted to make something that was a little different. So instead of having that blunt edge or that very, like, uh, you know, what would you call that? Not acute <laughs> edge. They decided to come up with something with a little bit more of a stabby tip. And that is something that, just like this Yojimbo, is designed especially for self-defense. It's a very stabby blade shape. Good for EDC? Absolutely. Absolutely. You're talking about ripping some boxes open. You get very fine tips so you can cut little bitty small things with it. Uh, I have found, though, I stick myself with these more. Mm -hmm. I've carried this uh, splinter a lot, and it has just stuck me because it's so pointy. So you got to be more careful when you're carrying a Warren Cliff. All right, what you got next? Quick break for pocket check. What's in the pocket today? Well, I'm wearing black, so I have my Spider Co. Delica. There you go. Oldie but goodie. Yep, I love my lanyard. <laughs> Speaking of blade shapes, Spider Co. just does their own thing. So, yeah, and that was one of the points I was going to make. What do you call that? <laughs> that's that's a Warren Cliff. That's a leaf blade. That is... <laughs> That's all kinds Spear of point. stuff. Spear point. It's, it's all kinds of stuff. Clip point, because it was cut off. Yeah, it's it's weird, but yep. it, it's all of the above. So if you don't know the name of the shape of it, a good way out is to say it's modified. I'd call that a modified Warren Cliff. In the pocket for me, something that I'm super excited to have, the NASCO Lander. Yeah. <sighs> Going to be budget knife of the year, I'm thinking, for a lot of people. Um really great knife really cool design has some swappable scales and uh, has its own CAD file that you can download and make your own of course this is the man the myth the legend Ben Peterson who designed the baby, uh, banter. baby banter and the big banter oh you got one too Always. I, finally, I finally picked one up after last week's podcast I went to SCB and he had this one so I got it but yeah uh, designer of the banter baby banter and soon to be which I'm super excited for the big banter big banter so that's what's in the pocket today nice my turn? Yes, sir. All right. I think I'm on to... No, I'm not on to my last one. This one, pretty cool. I meant to go home and get my kitchen knife. Or I meant... I thought about it during the day, and I didn't bring it with me. And this is the cleaver. So, cleaver blade, obviously, was used in the kitchen. Uh, that's where it originated, if I'm not mistaken. And I might be. Like I said, we're not perfect. Let us know if we mess up. But... Looks like that's designed for chopping up Absolutely. barbecue right there. Yeah, used for 
your original cleavers were kind of used for just cleaving the joints of bones. If you were butchering an animal, you would open that um, joint up, and joints are a lot softer. Uh, I guess we both have experience from skin and deer where, you know, you can break through joints a lot easier than you can normal bones. So you get in that joint, and you hack and hack, and it'll break that joint apart, and you can remove that limb. Very gory, but that's the way it and works. And actually, a lot of people use a handsaw and just cut through. Right. You do not even need a handsaw. Right. You can, you can take the full head off of a deer just with a little pocket knife. Right, you can. And I've done it many times with my skin and knife um, on the hams of a deer, taking that bottom yeah, calf off. Just got to find that pivot. Right. So <laughs> that's what the cleaver was originally used for. Now, can it be used for everyday carry? Absolutely. Uh, you've got models like this. You've got models like the Sheepdog, which is modified cleaver. It's more of a sheep's foot, but it's also a cleaver blade. So you've got knives from CJRB. You've got a lot of everyday carry knives in the cleaver. There was a little bit of a fad going around where everybody wanted a cleaver. Yeah. And so there was a, quite a few of them put on the market. But, yes, absolutely. Now, this is more of a modified cleaver because it's got the swoop in it. You know, most of your original cleavers would go straight out, straight down. That's your original cleavers. But this one's got a little bit of a uh, everyday carry flair to it. So pretty sweet. And absolutely, you can use a cleaver for everyday carry. My buddy has uh, the Bull Mastiff, right? Yeah, that. full size. This is the mini Bull Mastiff. Okay. He's got the full size Bull Mastiff. So he has the full. And um, he showed one of his uh, his nephews. He's, he's like a 10-year-old kid. He, pull, he pulled it out, and he said, hey, check out my new knife. And he flips this out, and that little kid said, whoa, is that a cleaver? So here's a 10-year-old boy that as soon as he saw it, he knew what it was. Right. It was a cleaver. Awesome. All right, next for me is the classic Karambit. He's a little bit more qualified to talk about this blade shape than I am because even though I am a martial artist, me and him both are, He's my instructor, so he, he knows a little bit more about this than I do. Well, um, I only have two in my collection. They're, I, I do have a trainer. You can see it back on the wall back there. So we, we do train with karambits. Um, I do not recommend training with real blades ever. <laughs> so it originated in West Sumatra, yeah. which is uh, Indonesia, right? It, it dates back thousands of years. And it says, folklore says, that they took this blade shape from a cat. Yeah, yeah that makes you know, a lot of sense. Maybe w whether it was a house cat, I doubt it. It was probably more like a tiger or, a, you know, a cougar or a puma or something. Wow. You know, you can see the blade shape. Mm -hmm. Very good. Now, what I like about a karambit is kind of designed to carry backwards, reverse grip, you know. So um, I, I thought about it. I was like, okay, what's the difference between a hawkbill and a karambit? Boy, don't they look the same. So why do we call them different things? Again, if you, if you give me a better answer, please let me know. The hawkbill, again, designed for pruning and things like that, agricultural, and more carried like this. This was designed for one thing in mind, self-defense, right. to carry in a reverse grip. Imagine a boxer having this in their hand and throwing some punches at you. Or worse, imagine me with this in your, my hands <laughs> and striking with it. So very dangerous. Now, I like this CRKT Provoke. It's one of the most innovative knives I've ever seen. You can just open it with the thumb. But I also got, of course, some cool ways to open it. So if you're holding it like this, you can just be walking, jogging, have it like that, flip it out back. So a lot of cool ways to carry. And I guess you would consider this a karambit as well. This is the K-Bar TDI. It was uh, designed for police officers to put this on their opposite side of their weapon, their gun. So if a bad guy is reaching for their gun, they can then pull this and use it with their other hand. So it's very K-barish. I mean, not K-barish, Karambitus. <laughs> Karambitus. But it doesn't have the finger hole. And that's what I really like about the CRKT Provoke. And most Karambits, they have that finger ring there that you can spin it and do cool tricks with. And you see, I would, I would say what makes it a Karambit is the handle shape. 
It wouldn't shock me a bit if this was technically a hawk bill blade, mm -hmm. but the handle shape and everything combined makes it a caramba. Yeah, that that would make perfect sense. But I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Let us know. Yes. I'm sure. And don't don't just be a keyboard warrior. Please be somebody with actual experience. Yes. All right. Is that all of yours? Is it time for honorable mentions? Honorable mentions. All right. Let's do it. You've got all the my honorable mentions. I think I have two. Actually, I only have one. I've already mentioned the other one. It was the leaf shape. So I've, gotcha. I've the kukri. Kukri, uh, I love the shape. Um, this is really made for chopping, hacking, you know, thick bush, like uh, bamboo and stuff like that. Like George Bush. No, let's keep him. <laughs> and um, Obviously, it was designed not as a pocket knife. So if you have a pocket knife that looks like this, they won't call it a kukri. They'll call it a recurve. Oh, yes, yes, yes. So, yeah, if you, if, you, know, if you have a folder knife that looks like that, they most, most of the time they call them a recurve blade. But uh, that's the kukri. And I've never seen a folding knife that looks like a kukri. The only one I have seen is that Vosteed that I have, the nightshade. And it just in blade shape kind of resembles one. But that's about the only one I've seen. So are we ready to talk about the final one? Everybody knows the most used blade shape out there. Drop point. Drop point. Oh, by the way, can a kukri be used as, or I mean a, a karambit be used as everyday carry? You know, I do carry, the, I have carried the CRKT Provoke a lot. Um, I, yeah, absolutely. It could be but used for everyday carrying. For utility? Is it practical to carry everyday? No, not really. I mean, the, the purpose of it for me is self-defense. And I believe if I actually use it in self-defense, I would go to jail. And they would show that in the court of law that what I use is self-defense. And then they would put me under the jail. So <laughs> probably not a good idea to carry. Probably not. Okay, so you grab yours that are drop point. Oh. Everybody knows the drop point. Yeah. The knife I'm carrying in my pocket today is a drop point. The knife I carried to work today is a drop point. The Civivi Baby Banter is a drop point. Yeah. My favorite knife, the Kaiser T1, is a drop, drop point. point. Bug out. Drop point. Drop point. Um, what's another one? CRKT Polar 3. Drop point. Um Every knife, every knife company has a drop point. Yeah. And you can see that you would think, well, the, the CRKT squid is a drop point. It's a little different. Right. Just because it's symmetrical. So the whole point of a drop point is the point drops down, <laughs> as the name implies. So as you can see here on the, we'll use the NASCO lander, the back of the spine starts a gradual curve and drops down right to where the point is under the spine. It just drops down. Simple as that. Now, the drop point blade actually wasn't that infamous until around the 1960s, I think is really when it started to get bigger. And that is because the man himself, Bob Loveless, designed, started designing some of his knives with drop points. And that's when it took off. And so now, this is a guess, but if I had to guess how many, 90? Well, I, let's be a little more conservative. 80% of folding knives, and I would dare say 50% of fixed blades are now drop points. It is the most versatile blade shape out of all of them, I would say. And what I mean by that is, is it good at piercing? Yeah, it's pretty good, but it's not as good as a Tonto. Is it good at utility cuts? Yeah, but it's not as good as a, sheep point, as a sheep's foot. Is it as good at making those really, you know, fine, flat cuts? Yeah, but not as good as a reverse Tonto. <laughs> or Warncliffe. Or Warncliffe. So what am I getting at here? It is the jack of all trades, master of none. Uh, personally, my favorite blade shape is a drop point. Uh, it works best for me, does everything I need it to. But then there's times I'll be doing a cut and I'm like, well, a sheep's foot sure would work a lot better right here. Or a... Reverse Tonto would be great right here, or I don't want to break the tip of my knife making this cut, so a Tonto would be better here, or to scrape something off, so on and so forth. But for a majority of the things I use it for, a drop point is perfect for me. So 
That is the one that everybody knows. You you look in somebody's pocket, and unless they've got some kind of Chineseium knife that's most of the time some kind of weird hawk bill shape or something, they've got a drop point in their pocket. A lot of the old pocket knives are going to be your drop points. So, of course, we had to cover the drop point, the Absolutely. most used blade shape out there today. And here's the bottom line, folks. Get whatever you want. Exactly. Whatever you think looks good. Whatever you think is practical. Are all these knives practical? Yes, for one purpose. Right. Some multiple purposes. Right. So get what you like, get what looks good, get what feels good, and that's all that matters. And that's not to say that these other blades don't work great for other things like everyday carry tasks. But from my experience, and I would guess from your experience too, drop points seems to work the best for just about any task you need it for. Correct. I could I could go out into the woods and I could skin a deer with this. I've done it before with, like I said, my rat two, rat one, which I honestly think, I think that's a drop point. And I've done it with that just because of the way the belly was shaped. So the term drop point is very broad. It gives you, you know, I've seen drop points with bellies that go, woo, swoop really, really deep, and then it's still a drop point. So you can get creative with a drop point. You can do, see how many times I can say drop point in two minutes. But <laughs> you can get really creative with the blade shape of it. But at the end of the day, it's a drop point. Cool beans. Well, that was a very long-winded episode. Let's. It was, but uh, I think it was good. Educational. Hope right. you learned something. Well, and I've, I've looked on the internet doing research for this, and there's not m too many videos like they're out there. So hopefully this helps somebody. If you're here looking at this video saying, well, what is the use of a sheep's foot, or what is the use of a karambit style, or a hawk bill, or a spear point, or blah, 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 blah. There you go. Hopefully this is a little bit of an educational video. <laughs> Number one rule. It's got to look cool. Yeah, it's got to look awesome. That's why I love the harpoon so much. You know, yep. I don't use that uh, that thumb ramp very often, but it looks awesome. No? That's true. All righty. Well, I guess that's it for the day. Hope you enjoyed it. We had a good time. Yeah. Like, comment, subscribe, all those wonderful little things. Again, getting close to 500 subscribers, and as soon as we get well, – we might hit 500 before we do the giveaway, but soon that will be coming up. So stick around, keep an eye on the channel, and enter that. But hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day. God bless you. Now we got to shoot four hours of B-roll. <laughs> See you next time.